Hi there, and welcome to a brief introduction to the SEM automation features of the Rave Eline tool. Now, the Rave Eline is primarily an e metrography tool, but it has some very nice automation features for SEM applications. And once you get to know them, you can quite quickly get the hundreds of images of your sample in an automated way. So I'll just demonstrate how to set that up. The system has two monitors. On the left monitor, you'll find the usual SEM software that is identical to the one running on the Super SEMs. So you'll feel right at home here. It behaves in exactly the same way. On the right screen, however, you have the Nano Suite software. This is where you will run EV exposure jobs, or it is here you will set up automated SEM features. The first thing you'll typically want to do is to find your sample. And for this, it's a good idea to open the sample holder map. We're using the universal sample holder. And you can simply drive around this one by control right clicking on a location. And you can see where the beam is right now, indicated by the crosshairs. While you can, of course, turn on the beam exactly like you're used to from the SEM software, the Nano Suite software has another feature here in the column control. You can store beam conditions and then you can basically restore them by a single click. So you can see I have several profiles here. And from the page here, you can see what settings are saved into the profiles. To restore a beam profile, you simply right click it and choose activate. Now, the best way to use the SEM automation features is to align your sample to a pattern. So that, of course, requires that your sample comes from a lithography process. But if it does, then you can load up your TDS file from the uh, TDS viewer here, and we select to view all levels of the design. So you can see I have a pretty uh, simple design here. It's actually a dose test design, and it has some nice alignment crosses that we will use in a moment to align the sample to the TDS pattern. Alignment is done through the three point alignment page. So we need to find three points on our substrate that corresponds and we can link up to three points in our design file. Now I have gone ahead and I've already found my first mark. And uh, for this example, it is a very nice cross that is very easy to align to. Now having zoomed in on the sample, I turn to the DDS layout where I also zoom into the center of the cross, I take the flag, flag number one, and that will be my first marker. I click read stage coordinate on P1, and then I click adjust. And so now this same stage position is correlated to this particular point in my TDS file. To move on to the second cross, I simply control right click in the design file, and the stage will take me very close to where this cross is. And that works only because the rotation of my sample is very, very small. Having centered the SEM on the second mark, I drop flag number two on the center in my design file. And again, I choose read stage coordinate and click adjust. For the third mark, I can simply control right click in my design file. And the stage takes me basically to the correct location since we now have two points defining the substrate. Again, I uh, adjust and use the third flag, read out position again for 0.3 and click adjust. And now we have fully aligned our sample to the TDS file. And I can now move to any feature of my design simply by control right clicking in the design file and the sample move along. Now, before we start any automated SEM imaging, we need to do a uh, right field alignment. And this is not something you're used, used to on a regular SEM. Uh, so the term right field alignment, it basically comes from the e-beam writing part of the tool. And it means that you align the stage position to the beam position. And for a regular SEM, that is not so critical because you drive the stage to some location and then you image at that location. So a perfect correlation between the stage position and beam position does not need to exist. But when you're doing e-beam writing for uh, overlay exposure or to align to, uh, to different fields of your exposure, it is critical that you have a perfect alignment of the e-beam, uh, the e-beam spot or the e-beam field to the stage. And when you're doing automated imaging, it is also quite critical. So I find that if you don't do a right field alignment on the tool, the beam position is off by roughly half a micrometer. 
And if you're doing images that are 20 by 20 mic meters, then have a mic meter offset, doesn't matter so much. But if you're doing images that are maybe just two mic meters across, then half a mic meter offset means a lot. So to get around that, we need to align the, uh, the stage to the beam position. And that is done in a manual or automated feature. Uh, and I'll show you the, uh, the automated uh, alignment process. So for doing the right field alignment, you need some sort of feature. It can be a particle or it can be a, a small feature on your substrate. It should not be a repetitive pattern though. It should be a, a unique feature. Um, so what the procedure does, it takes an image of that feature and then it uh, drives the stage off to four or eight different locations around your feature and it deflects the beam back to your feature. And any shift between the original image and the deflected images, any shift in position is, uh, is caused by the, the beam not being uh, uh, aligned properly or the right field not being aligned to the stage properly. And uh, during the right field alignment, this is then uh, aligned. For right field alignment in this case, I have chosen to use one of our small crosses. The right field alignment procedure exists in the scan manager and it comes in both a manual and an automatic version. For this example, we'll use the automatic version. It's called automatic with images and there are different images sizes to choose from or to set up. So in this case, we have a five micrometer field. And if we look at the mark procedure, we can see that it takes four images or four positions and of course a center image to compare to. Since I've already centered the stage on the cross, we can simply execute the command and you'll see what it does. It snaps an image here in the center and then it will move the stage to four different positions, snap a deflected image of each uh, cross and then from this, it can deduce the offset of the field in both X and Y. And once it has deduced the offset, it will of course correct it. We're now ready to set up the automation. To do this, we will create an empty position list. You can think of a position list as a uh, list of commands or a sequence of commands. To uh, Take images, we will simply go to the scan manager where you can find the image templates. Now, in my design, I have these nine big fields and I would like to image all of them to get an overview. So I'll take my 100 micrometer field of view image and I'll simply drag and drop it on a location where I want an image taken. Now I have nine fields, so I would of course like to create a matrix of this. So I go to filter and matrix copy. I make a, not a three by three matrix spaced 100 by 100 micrometers apart. In order to execute the list, we simply press scan selection. And now we'll proceed to scan these nine fields. And after that, we can review the images. I will let this play in real time so you can get a sense for the speed. So it takes an image every five or seven seconds. So you can see with this kind of setup, you can get a lot of images very fast. Once the list has been executed, you can double click the lines on the position list to see your images. You can also double click the green boxes on the layout itself to see the image where it has been taken. And as you can see, as long as you're in the software, you can easily find where each image has been taken. Having generated my overview images, I'll then proceed to do some more close-up images. So in this case, we'll do some five by five fields. And I'll put uh, four by four of these spaced around these single lined elements. So this will generate a uh, 16 element list, which we will then uh, just quickly execute. And for the sake of time, I'll just uh, fast forward through this part. So 
So this part is sped up by a factor of 7. But as you can see, you can generate a lot of images really, really fast. As long as you stay within the nano suite, you have a perfect control of where images are taken. But when you move this to your own computer, it can be a daunting task to, uh, to get an overview of all your images. Now, for this case, I often use PureRef to keep an overview of my images. Now, PureRef is a free download, and it's basically a blank canvas where you can um, grab and, uh, and drop hundreds or thousands of images, and you can organize them into groups, you can label them, and, uh, and so forth. And it just helps provide a really, really nice and easy to look at overview of your, uh, of your same images. So I hope this short intro gave you uh, a taste for what the tool can do. And if you need training on it, then uh, let Drava or me know and we can uh, easily set you up with a training session.